Let's go! T.J. Finley, is LSU missing out on a potential superstar quarterback because he's entered the transfer portal and a lot of you are scared he's going to go to another SEC team and light us up. Ugh. So look, we're going to be honest about T.J. Finley in this video. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attempt nuance when, you know, comparing him to Garrett Nussmeyer, Miles Brennan, and Max Johnson and Jake Peets' quarterback room. Because this quarterback battle is very complicated. Now, this nuance thing is going to be tough. So, I'm looking at you, angry commenter. Okay, look, me and you. Here's what I'm going to do. My eye test about this quarterback battle, I'm going to save my honest personal opinions on TJ Finley in this quarterback room for the end of the video. But what I'm first going to do is share this thing called data, okay? Now, I first want to respond to a comment here from Jeremy. I was looking forward to catching up on this, but with the 15-minute clip, well, that's what you're getting today, Jeremy, because yesterday we did a live stream, first breaking news live stream we've ever done. Let me know if you guys like that, because the TJ Finley news broke, and we pretty much went immediately live. So what you're looking at now is a table of contents for how this video is going to go. It's going to be complex because quarterbacking is complex. Now let's start with the first layer because this is the most popular defense of TJ Finley. He played tougher defenses than Max Johnson, which I agree with. But then when I say that, you know, I get comments like this one that says, your allegiance to TJ Finley is just absolutely crazy. I've been called a TJ lover and a hater. So... Let's actually look at the data. Let's see if I'm wrong on this. Did TJ Finley play tougher defenses? And the answer to that is a resounding yes. Now, there is a caveat to it that goes against TJ Finley, all right? And we'll get to that in just a second. But we're first discussing raw data. Now, yards per game, Texas A&M. Number one, Alabama. Number three, Auburn number six, and so on and so on. And when you actually go on a yards per play basis, you see Arkansas, they played a lot of plays per game. If you actually go by yards per play, this Arkansas defense becomes a lot better, okay? They're seventh in the SEC in yards per play. While Alabama, Texas A&M, that sneaky good Mississippi State defense, and Auburn. So you see on a yards per play basis, T.J. Finley played four of the top seven defenses in his five starts. Clark at SEC StatCat also does yards per pass. And you notice here, Alabama, I'll even zoom in for you a little bit. Alabama, Auburn, Arkansas, and Texas A&M were the top four defenses in the SEC in yards per per pass, okay? So, TJ Finley played the four best defenses when it comes to defending the pass on a per play efficiency basis. There's some caveats to this because data is just data. They're numbers. You do need to add more context. I always say this, when it comes to talking about a huge story, which of course, this is a huge story. T.J. Finley is leaving the team. You need to talk about two things, math and circumstances. So we've gone through the math here. We've gone through the data, right? Now let's talk about T.J. Finley's circumstances. There is a major aspect of circumstances that helps T.J. Finley. There's also a major negative when it comes to T.J. Finley's game when it comes to circumstances. First of all, T.J. Finley should have never played last season. In fact, a true freshman quarterback should never be your top backup. That is not either his or Max Johnson's fault. Peter Parrish was suspended by Coach Orgeron, and Peter Parrish transfers to Memphis, and so on and so on. So, him or Max Johnson should have never seen the field. And I've always said this, true freshman quarterbacks should never be your backup. Now, of course, LSU, there was nothing they could really do about it. Uh, you know, when you do bad things off the field and you transfer, I mean, there's just nothing you could do. So 
number one, if Miles Brennan never got hurt, he would have never have been benched. So if that's the case, then TJ Finley or Max Johnson would have never even seen the field. So that is a huge, huge aspect about all this because TJ Finley was a 19-year-old true freshman going up against adults, a huge competition jump from Ponchatoula High School, which, by the way, is a great high school program that produces elite talent, and Louisiana high school football is competitive, but going from there to there is absolutely insane. I mean, how many times have you ever seen a true freshman quarterback at LSU get a start? It is rare behind a not-so-great offensive line that is not good. So this should have been the Peter Parrish show once Miles Brennan got hurt. Now, if Peter Parrish would have gone out there and played bad, then you would have had to go to Max or TJ. But, you know, at, at, at least you would have seen him play bad. So that's obviously something that needs to get discussed now. Also, there is no telling if Max Johnson would have won the quarterback battle before the Florida game. Because the way it worked was Missouri happened and then LSU was scheduled to go to Gainesville that very next week. So LSU would have played a fully healthy Florida with Kyle Pitts in the lineup. And I, I don't know if Max Johnson would have been the starter or TJ would have been the starter. Ed Orgeron said that he made the decision based on who he thought had a better week of practice. And TJ Finley apparently had a better week of practice. And that's who they rolled with against South Carolina. But that is where the negative caveat with T.J. Finley begins to set in. So, T.J. Finley started five games. Five games. And he won two of them. But something really rare happened in those two games. And we have not talked enough about it. What about those two wins, right? South Carolina and Arkansas. So, T.J. Finley was phenomenal against South Carolina in his first ever start. He was also phenomenal against Arkansas. The game-winning drive was crazy considering that the weather changed. He was throwing a wet ball, and he had a TD taken away from TDP that looked pretty good, and he still drove the team down the field to score the game-winning touchdown. But in those two games, TJ Finley had a ridiculous amount of things go in his favor. Now, think about how college football normally operates, right? You play one game a week, right? You play one game and then you play another team the next week and you normally only have one bye week so LSU normally plays their bye week or plays their bye week LSU normally has their bye week before Alabama and Alabama takes its bye week before LSU so LSU rarely rarely if ever really has more time to prepare for the opposition than the other Um, In both cases, against South Carolina and Arkansas, LSU had more time to prepare than either of those teams. So because of pandemic-related issues, LSU had a few weeks to prepare for South Carolina, and they were the fresher team, where South Carolina the week before, if I'm not mistaken, had a game against Auburn on the road, which, of course, body physiology experts could potentially comment on this you're the fresher team and you have more time to scout for that team the same thing is true for Arkansas who played against Florida the week before it was a shootout and for this game you see this photo right here this was Arkansas's only healthy defensive lineman their defensive line room got hit with the pandemic now Jonathan Marshall is a really good defensive line but Arkansas did, LSU did something really smart. They said, we're not going to make Marshall beat you. We're going to let your other walk-on level defensive linemen beat us. And this was one of the other few good Arkansas players that were healthy. And as you see, TJ delivering a strike um, in this game while he's getting hit. Now, TJ made some amazing plays on fourth and three through a dart in a tight window to Eric Gilbert to move the chains. And then on the next throw, hit Racy McMath for a TD. And then, of course, the game-winning drive. He was really good, and Eric Gilbert actually dropped a TD strike over the middle in this game as well. But with that said, TJ Finley's two best games came when he had more time to prepare, all right? That is not how college football works. This is rare that that is the case. 
when things are going to be a little bit more back to normal, you're going to be on a week-by-week basis. Now, remember, he should have never even been playing, but this is just part of the discussion here. And trust me, LSU's coaches have definitely discussed this very thing. And in South Carolina and Arkansas, TJ Finley was aided by this thing called a a, a pick six, uh, per se. Pick sixes change games. (laughs) They really do. And LSU had one against South Carolina, and LSU had one, of course, against Arkansas. And it wasn't quite a pick six. Jabril Cox took it back to the one-yard line. And then LSU, of course, pounded it in on the next play. Now, of course, Max Johnson had a pick six go in his favor, which is the Elias Ricks film study. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this. So you can come by on Sunday night. That's when the Elias Ricks film study will be. Um, but still, that it's it just such a huge boost for your team to get seven points on the board when you're starting true freshman quarterbacks without them even stepping on the field, really. So, so yes, it is kind of wild to say, but all four of their wins, TJ Finley and Max Johnson, were aided by pick sixes. Now, yes, it is true, and I've heard you know, different people say Max Johnson is overrated. And I've read those comments. Look, it is true that Max Johnson did play easier defenses. That Florida defense wasn't all that great, but that still was the best performance of the season. Max Johnson, especially compared to TJ Finley, didn't have Terrace Marshall. The Eric Gilbert distraction was, was there the week before, and he still went out there and balled and while doing so, did not turn the football over, okay? That is a huge thing for Ed Orgeron in particular, the turnover margin. And I know all coaches feel that way, but Ed Orgeron has repeatedly said in interviews that turnover margin is one of the most important things in the game of football to him. So, you know, especially when you compare it to uh, TJ Finley, Max Johnson did all of those things while also not having those extra weeks to prepare. Boom! So you're now waiting for my personal evaluation, my personal eye test, because everything that I've said is just truth. Now, how do I personally feel about this quarterback room? Well, it's pretty complex. The first thing I would say is buy your shirt now. The first shipment of t-shirts go out in less than 24 hours. So if you're watching this on a premiere... I'm calling you out. If you don't have your shirt yet, click this link down below or I'm posting it in the chat right now. But now that all of you have already ordered your shirts or dropped a Venmo or Cash App to help out the channel and the lawn service, you would get that joke if you watched our emergency live stream yesterday. I will give you my honest opinion about TJ Finley. Um, He's not as good as the other two right now okay and we'll get to his potential in just a second but the spring game set him back I saw the same mechanical issues that we saw last season which leads to turnovers perfect example his first interception in the spring game I won't get too deep into these interceptions you could find my full spring game analysis where I broke down every throw and every play of the spring game so Um, watch those links down below, but TJ Finley's first interception was because of the throw before sloppy mechanics forced the ball to sail on him on a wide open wide receiver, which is really bad. That's where mechanics eventually leads to an interception and bad decision making. So all of those things were on display with TJ Finley, and he was the only quarterback that did not score a touchdown in the spring game. Now, once again, I hate spring games. It's one spring game, right? So we don't know what happened in the other practices or scrimmages. Maybe he dominated those. We weren't there. We couldn't see that. But those spring games, or the spring game, was just a continuation of some of the issues that he had last season. So that, to me, was something that really hurt TJ Finley and on top of that he is not that mobile of a quarterback now he has a special arm and he does give you a little bit more as a runner compared to let's say Miles Brennan but he is a pocket quarterback he is nowhere close the mobile playmaker that is Max Johnson or potentially Garrett Nussmeyer now let's talk about Garrett Nussmeyer as far as his quarterback battle Could there have been a scenario where Garrett surpassed T.J. Finley as QB3, and that was 
what eventually led him to go elsewhere. Now, I don't know that. I would tell you this. TJ Finley would still be my QB3 simply because of the five games experience last season, and I want to avoid playing true freshman quarterbacks at all cost. And that's the thing. Garrett Nussmeyer also made bad interceptions in the spring game. But he is a true freshman. These are his first 15 practices. He is an early enrollee at a complex position. And for the first time in his life, he's not the best athlete on the field. And this is a thing about early enrollees. You know, they're playing these spring games the same time all their friends are going to prom. So while they're in tuxedos going to have a, a two for 20 dinner uh, at Applebee's, Garrett Nussmeyer is going up against adults uh, for the first time in his life in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands of LSU fans watching the spring game around the world. So that is two completely different situations. And in that game, Garrett Nussmeyer showed me more playmaking ability than maybe all of them. He he had some pretty ridiculous plays, but of course he's not there yet as a true freshman quarterback. Now, is Max Johnson and Miles Brennan way better quarterbacks than TJ Finley? No, as far as skill set is concerned, TJ's arm is special, but there is just so much work to do. And I go back to what I said earlier. He shouldn't have even played last season. Those five games experience are going to be really good for him long term. Down the road, he could end up being an unbelievable quarterback, an NFL draft pick quarterback. Wherever he goes, he could have unbelievable amounts of success. We've seen different transfer quarterbacks after that transfer, after this first real big uh, big bit of adversity hits you, and when you're told basically you're not good enough to be the quarterback of LSU right now, you know, that's a good chip on your shoulder to work on these little things a little bit more. And even he said in an interview with Emily Dixon that sometimes he relies on his arm strength too much, which will eventually cause the football to do weird things coming out of your hand. Because uh, for those that don't know, once again, I'm not JT O'Sullivan. I am not a quarterback expert. You should go watch JT's content. He does a good job breaking things like this down. Your body is so important when it comes to quarterback uh, play as far as your footwork and uh, your hip placement and all those different things. And look, this is a novice quarterback evaluator right here, but I saw this consistently with TJ Finley. And I know he had bad pass protection. I know he played tougher opponents, but just the simple mechanical thing still needs work. And even TJ himself has admitted that. And if he works on those things and he works on his decision making and, you know, he he takes his adversity with the huge step forward in his life and in his game, he will be something special. But here's the thing as an LSU fan you shouldn't do is think about TJ Finley having success elsewhere. Georgia fans do this with Justin Fields and even Ohio State fans do this with Joe Burrow. This is part of the growth. This is part of what helps you as a quarterback is this transfer. So, look, some quarterbacks work out at the school that they initially go to. A lot of what I've said is just truth. It's just how I honestly feel. I've watched every throw TJ Finley's made. I even rewatched the Arkansas game before TJ Finley even made his transfer announcement yesterday, okay? So, I love him. I personally wish he would have worked out. I always cheer for three-star kids out of Louisiana uh, because it it is so rare to get an LSU offer as a three-star kid in Louisiana. And I will save this for the Saturday night live stream because I think live streams are better when it comes to discussing serious matters. Uh, Race, I, I know some of you want to talk race and the quarterback position. I will gladly do that on Saturday night because... Look, during a live stream, something extremely racist happened, and it did involve TJ Finley with some random commenter, and I felt bad so much that I did an entire video discussing things like that, and, you know, racism obviously is bad, but there is a more complex discussion involving racism in the quarterback position, because when I read comments such as body language and, and all those different things, it does, you know... It does make me a little uncomfortable, but I I feel like I can discuss that better on a live stream while you're chatting and it's live and all those things. So we will dive deep into that because, look, the history of the black quarterback in the state of Louisiana is very, very, very important, whether that be Doug Williams or Jamarcus Russell or Rohan Davey. 
I would gladly discuss that further in the live stream because it is the elephant in the room. It is something that we all think about. But I, I will end this video with this. Ultimately, what hurt TJ Finley in this quarterback battle comes down to ability right now. Right now. I'm talking about at this second. He was not QB2. He was definitely not QB1. He was closer to QB4 than he was QB2. I hope you enjoyed this video today. It was obviously some hard truth. It was obviously a very layered analysis because this past season was so freaking wild. It is power hour LSU. Boom. Oh, yeah. I think we're doing. Um, oh, yeah. I'll give you a little bit of a tease here. If you want to see who my QB1 is for right now, boom, there's a video for you right there. And uh, we are doing leftover tacos tonight for Cinco de Mayo. Let's go. Woo.